Yo, what it do, man? This is Grindface and the Therapist. I'm Demetrius. And I'm sending you. We've been together for mm, 28 years, married for 23, 24, but who's counting? Today is episode 23, and we're going to get on topic of toxic. You know what I'm saying? From a wide variety of toxic. Toxic relationships, toxic environment, toxic food, toxic whatever. You know what I'm saying? So let, let's kick that off on. Toxic. Talk to him, man. What you what, when you you hear the word people say toxic? What's the first thing that pops up in your mind? Run. <laughs> toxic people, um, toxic environments, like you were saying, toxic food. So you was you would say toxic just relates to something bad. You can't get absolutely. It's 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 not related to something good. It's not positive. When you hear the word toxic, no way would you ever think that's something positive. Yeah, I mean, you got a point if you sit there and think about it. It's like from food to everything, if it's toxic, I guess that's a one-sided word right there, toxic. Yeah, eliminate it. Like, damn, you toxic. Have you ever experienced toxic people in your life? Yes, I have. Man, my mom was very toxic. You know what I'm saying? Um, And that was sad because how she, our relationship with that toxic, I don't know. It was just, you know, one of them parents, that's so attached to their kids, they 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 don't want to let them go. And I think that's very toxic of not having a life and your kids become your life. So I think that became very toxic with me because I was moving on. Yeah, in, in a situation like that, I actually don't want to condemn her. I feel bad for her because I think when you don't know any better, it's all you know, right? Not to say that it was it was pleasant for either of us. But at the same time, you know, many times people operate in dysfunction and they don't even realize they're operating in dysfunction because they've never seen anything healthy. You know what it is? I think that toxic could relate more to dysfunction, too. It you know is what I'm saying? Go hand in hand together. Yeah, it's, well, toxic, being in a toxic relationship is dysfunctional. So my thing is I even had toxic friends, you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, you, you want to go, you pussy whip. They, they try to lead you to... They 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 mad that what you got they want, so they try to sabotage. You know what I'm saying? So when you make the bad decisions, they try to come swoop in and you know what I'm saying? I had toxic friends. My thing is once you see somebody toxic, it's no way, no how they mean any good to you. You gotta get away from it. But it's not that they even are trying to do harm to you. They're actually doing harm to themselves and they don't even realize it. Just like you said, you have friends that said you were P with whatever, basically was trying to get you out to do things that were um, not productive or conducive to your marriage. But this is the thing, though. This is the life they're living. So this is their normalcy. So anything outside of that, not to say I'm maliciously trying to get him to do something, that's their norm. Yeah, and you got to respect the next man's norm. And that's the problem. People don't, they don't, they don't respect the next person norm. If you want to swim and shit, that's fine. But don't let me, <laughs> let me swim in the clean ass water. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, people get mad about your situation, but let me live in my situation. You live in your situation. Well, I agree. People don't understand that we could coexist and have differences, right? People don't understand that just because we have different views, different morals, different beliefs, that we could still communicate. You know, I don't have to think like you. You don't have to think like me. Even in a marriage, we don't always think alike. And we shouldn't because we're individuals. We came in this world by ourselves. We're leaving by ourselves. But many times people want you to adapt to them. And there's, yes. They want you to adapt to them because that's what they want to do. But I think that's that goes beyond just, you know, toxicity. I think that also crosses over to unhealthy boundaries. But a dysfunctional person doesn't have boundaries. Because if a person says, like, this is a, a, a big thing I, I I hate, and hate is a strong word. I'm a person that I don't like pushy people. I don't like when, I don't like salesmen. Yeah, people try yeah, to be I don't, peer pressure you. Keep, well, you can't peer pressure me. But I think when I tell you no and you keep, like, pushing, I think it's a form of disrespect. Like, respect my boundaries. And so um, if I say I don't drink, Stop trying to offer me a drink. I think it's so disrespectful. I remember when I was younger, I had a cousin, and um, I was smoking at the time. I would smoke recreational as a teenager um, here and there because, you know, Mr. Mile was a bad influence. However, <laughs> so 
I asked my cousin to smoke with us and he was like, I don't smoke. And I told him, I said, Hey, and don't ever start. And I respected that. And, and I was only like, what, 15 in. And I think people should really respect yes. when someone tells you that they don't do something. Um, just leave it at that. Like some people be like, Oh, let's do a girl's trip. I'm like the way my marriage is set up. We don't do that. Um, I don't want to hear a million things. Did you just pull the way my bank account is set up? <laughs> what? It's a joke. The way my bank account set up, I ain't got the funds for that. Yeah, you don't know it. Oh, no. I don't know what you're Somebody talking Somebody know the joke, though. However, um, but people will try to make it seem like there's something wrong with your yes. ideologies. It's like, no, just respect what someone is saying. Like, I never try to push someone to do something that I do. That's what I do. And if you don't enjoy it or you don't, that's not what you subscribe to, that's fine. And I think that's where the problem comes in, even with dysfunction. But again, a dysfunctional person, they do not understand boundaries. So it's like, I do this. So then everybody should do this. It's like, no, respect that everyone is different and everyone has their own beliefs and, and um, ideologies that they subscribe to in this world. And I think that's where you need to cut. If they can't respect your boundaries, I think that's where you got to start cutting ties. But a person that don't respect your boundaries, they have already shown you that they don't respect themselves. Because if a person can't respect themselves, they will never respect you. And I'm big on that. That's a principle to me. If you don't respect your body, I don't expect you to um, respect mine. If you don't respect the privacy of your business, I don't yes. think you're going to respect mine. If you don't respect your marriage and your friendship or whatever it is, I don't expect you to respect mine because you don't have respect for your own. Yes, that's a valid point. So it, it's already, the proof is already in the pudding. I think many times we just deal with people because we love them. Like, let's go even, you know, with your mom. Well, you can tell your own story. But at the end of the day, you know, there were things that you had to do to separate yourself, to basically have a peaceful life. And people don't understand that. Like, oh, well, that's a person's mom. That's their brother, their sister. But it's like, if you're causing me Chaos, harm yes. and causing rift in my family, in my household, why would I keep dealing with that? And that's with anybody. Because you can only tell a person, hey, I don't like this. It's a lack of respect. It's like a lack of respect. You don't respect my boundaries, so I got to go. I mean, because you have, you have the choice. So if you decide not to respect my boundaries, hey, I gave you the choice. It's time for me to do what's right for myself. And as, as the people listening, you got to do what's right for you and yourself. So say like even with the like the the family gatherings, right? And then they're doing stuff that you really don't subscribe to. And many times people go, oh, but that's my family. But it's like, but is this environment, con it doesn't even have to be family, right? You know, we get- Well, yeah, we're talking about yeah. the toxic environment. Yeah, people invite us out to stuff all the time and they, oh, y'all bougie, y'all think. But it's like, nah, if I have to be hyper vigilant in a setting, if the first thing we think is, oh, we need to take something with us, then it's like, that's that's how I heard we, somebody say. If if, if you feel like you gotta setting? take a gun, you shouldn't go. Yeah, why would you want to be in a setting? Because you're already predicting or assuming that something negative is gonna happen. And so they'll be like, "Oh, you guys, you know, y'all bougie or y'all don't ever come." Up. But it's like the thing is, you're comfortable in this setting. You know, when I was out and I was young, I was comfortable in those settings because that was my norm. So I wasn't really looking at it as dangerous. This is what I do. Yes. But once you get wiser and you step back and you see things from a different perspective, you be, become and have a healthy mindset. You're like, wait a minute, this environment is not the environment I want to be in. And so when people are still stuck in those places, they're looking at you like, oh, you different. Instead of saying, you know what? I respect the fact that you don't want to come into this environment. And that's OK that I still want to be in this environment. Because I'm not looking down at you and saying I'm better than you. I'm just saying that's not conducive to my well-being. I feel like if, if God bless you to get out of a certain situation, why well, keep dibbling, di diving into it? Going backwards. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it, and that's where, because it's always the innocent person that get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that, that was a good person. They wasn't even supposed to be there. But you trying to show support and you the one got popped. And that's why you have to put yourself first in certain situations. And say, how does this, is this conducive to my well-being? You know, um, and everything I do, I try to, I try to be, I want to say probably 90 some percent of the time I am, I'm intentional with what I'm do, with where I'm, where I go, you know, the invites that I accept, because I don't want to just be anywhere. You know, I want to show support, but if 
my life is on the line. People are like, ain't nobody worried about you. Yeah, but it just, you could be in an environment. Nobody has to be worried about me. I could be in an environment. And it's an environment where it looks like something is bound to happen. It's not look. You can feel the energy. The, 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 the energy. You can feel the energy, the mindset of the people, the location of where it's at. It's a whole lot of factors, right? But you need to take that in consideration. But respect when somebody tells you. But if somebody, see, this is what people do too. When a person doesn't respect the fact that they're saying that they don't want to be there, they feel bad. Like, oh, are they saying, I think I'm better. And then you put yourself in a situation. But at the end of the day, I always tell people this. If you asking my husband to go somewhere and he gets killed, the only thing you could tell me is sorry. That's not going to bring him back to me. So then the answer is no. Because unless you could revive him and be God and bring him back, then I don't really care <laughs> that your feelings is hurt. I don't even care that you think I think I'm better. Because many times when me and my husband roll, we roll as a unit. We roll together. And so there's times I'll be invited and I'm like, nah, because I'm going to have my husband with me and it's not somewhere where I would invite him out to. And it could be something where it could be just real cool for women. But many times men in certain settings, they be on egos and, and trying to look good and show off. And it's like, this is not a setting that I'm going to bring my husband into. Environment. So that's like toxic environment. So you got to watch. The places you go, the deep people you deal with, and let's even get on the food we eat, man. It's like we, we eat this toxic food and, and we enjoy it. You know Anything what I'm saying? Anything that's toxic. I mean, the, the reality of toxicity, if, if you didn't enjoy it, you wouldn't you do, do it. Yeah. That's so, what... I mean, that's what anything. Yeah, it's toxic, but it's a gratification because if it wasn't a gratification, you would stay far from it, right? Um, but I think people have learned instant gratification that we don't think things through and how it's going to harm us even with sex, right? That's toxic to have a, a, a unhealthy relationship with sex, but it's a instant gratification. But what is the long, long-term effects? Are you talking about toxic random people or what? It could be even with porn. I think porn is bad. And, and, and I think it gives an unrealistic expectation for sex. And many times people get addicted to sex and then it has an issue within the relationship when you get married or you get into a relationship and, and you're thinking that your mate is going to perform on this level all the time when you have kids and there's a, <laughs> so you factors. think your mate is a Kobe and shit. Like this nigga, <laughs> this nigga ain't no oh Kobe. My goodness. <laughs> like, oh I just no. think it's unrealistic. Yeah. I think when you have an idea and you watch these things, it's like, oh, this is what sex is. But it's like, no, everybody, everybody has sex and connects differently. Right. So you're watching this porn. And so you already have an idea. This is what sex is. But you haven't even considered your mate. You haven't considered the person you're sleeping with to see what their needs are. So you already have an unhealthy relationship with sex based on what you think it is, based on what yes. you were watching. And then another form is even with people, you know, sometimes people just have sex for stress relief. Like you're dependent on another person to relieve your stress, which is also unhealthy. Then let's talk about, you know, you just want to have sex for <laughs> orgasm, right? She and just went on with this sex <laughs> shit. Like, I'm like, God damn. <laughs> I'm just talking about burgers and shit. Okay. She got, she's I'll talking about, go. no, go ahead and finish. I mean, the people need to learn something. That like, shit. <laughs> But even if you're having sex just for orgasm, you know, you're just meeting somebody and we're in this new society trend of, you know, it's okay to be a slut. It's okay to be a hoe. It's okay to just have sex with somebody without knowing their last name and who they are. All that. Not knowing is, their first name. You, no, but I'm serious. Like, and people just like, oh, I don't have to be in a relationship to have sex. But what are the consequences behind it? You true, know, what, what, what are you doing with your body? What are you making yourself accessible to? What are you make? What you know? You could get some, like people really don't take this stuff in consideration. It's, it's they ain't concerned about it. It's feeling good until something happens. So they have that baby mama and baby daddy drama. It don't even have to be that. It's just you know when to me character is everything. Character is everything, and people be thinking, oh, ain't nobody gonna know. We was just in a room. It was just me and that person, but. I don't know why people have this idea that you sleeping around and you're not being discussed. It's not a reality. Trust me. They telling yeah, their boys that they had sex with you. Believe me. Yeah. Somebody bragging about it somewhere. Not even a bragging about it. Probably telling their boy, Hey, you could have her too. And so it's just a lot of things that we have to think about when we're engaging in certain toxicity to what you say, a toxicity. <laughs> 
I can't say it, y'all. Just say toxic. You know what I'm saying? Dysfunction. Some words I don't know. Just just stick to dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the thing. When you when you when you don't look at things, you know, is this healthy or is it, but I don't think we're taught to understand what's healthy versus unhealthy. No, I mean what the, the schools teach you basic shit, but schools ain't teaching you life and most of our parents ain't teaching us I shit. I was just about to look I was looking you know at your side eye cuz you yeah. went to school and I'm thinking it's not the well, school's the school, response. Yeah, it's not but the school's re- of look, course look, not. Look, look, look. I get so annoyed with parents that think the school system is supposed to parent your children. I remember I was in an IEP meeting, individualized educational plan meeting for a kid. And the kid was behavior was terrible, got in trouble, got suspended. And we were explaining to the mom, Hey, he got expended, suspended and you took him on a trip. So she's, Her response to us was, what are you guys doing to um, give him a consequence at school? I said, well, that's why he was suspended. And you took him on a trip and rewarded him. It is not like, what do you mean? We we implemented the punishment and then you rewarded him for getting in trouble. Like you can't put your, your, your parental responsibility on someone else. You had them. And let's say even though the school has a job, right? I don't expect the school to do what I'm supposed to do because whether the school does it or not, I'm the still going to implement it into my kids. Nothing what the parents are supposed to do. And most of our parents, like my, I ain't learned shit about life with my parents, period, point blank. But you did though. Like what? <laughs> you learn what not to do. So even mm. though your parents, this is my thing. I don't take, I, I learned I learn from a, a a newborn baby. Well, I'm talking about like you sit down, y'all having to sit down one on one. Like, look, son, you you're gonna get a little horny. Things gonna pop up, and this and you know what I'm saying. Little sex talk. Never had a sex talk. You know what I'm saying. So your like, mom just gave you condoms. Basically, then and I guess that was her sex talk to me. Here's some condoms. Wow. Like I said, I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know how to put it on. None of that. Did she even know you? Did she even ask you where you having sex? I don't even think she asked me. She just came, like, basically, you know, I was a very attractive young man. So it's like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> she already, like, here, here you go, condoms. You know what I'm saying? So. Wow. That was the sex talk, I guess. Protect myself. But I think <laughs> even though you don't have those conversations, you can learn everything what not to do. True. But you still don't know if it's right or not. You still don't know even a lot of things. So, yeah, parents need to really sit down and discuss the uncomfortable with your children. I don't think it's that it's uncomfortable. I don't think they could. a parent can discuss what they don't know. I can't talk True. about dysfunctional behaviors with my kids if I don't know what that is. I can't have a conversation with my kids what it but is. But you to- could give them what you do know. Yeah, well, if you know I'm a I'm hoe saying? and I don't respect myself for my body, I'm giving them exactly <laughs> what. So that's my point. Is what I'm telling you. I, I can't mean, give you what you, I you don't taught, know. You taught them something though. You know what I'm saying? And it's shit. I mean, you give them, give them what you know. Shit. And that's what she did. She gave you what she knew. So, and that's my point. You can't expect someone to get. I can't expect someone to tell me how to get to Vegas if they don't know how to get there, right? And so she was giving you what she had from what she only was able to give. But then, then you got to step it up, you know? And I remember when you basically set our kids down and you had them do a budget and all this type of stuff. And I'm always teaching my, I'm telling you my baby, the youngest, she's like, mom, every time you talk, it's a motivational speech or a speech or a life lesson, because I'm teaching you. It is my job to be your counselor, to be your teacher, to be your parent, to be, to be everything that I'm supposed to teach you to be equipped in this world. That is my job. So every time, okay, mom, okay, it's not a life lesson. It is a life life lesson because I'm teaching you. I'm molding you. You're molding a person. But let's get back to the toxic food because we we got on food and you got on sex. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the pleasure, the the self pleasure. Oh, of I found my house shoes. Fast, I was wondering where they were. Fast food at every corner. It's 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 easier to access fast and unhealthy food. And the thing is, I even try to eat healthy. And the bad thing about healthy food, if you don't eat it as soon as possible, it goes bad. Now, can you translate that in life? Like, 
basically of relationship wise of certain things, I guess certain things you don't cherish or take care of can really spoil you and be toxic. You know what I'm saying? If you don't nourish your relationships, if you don't nourish your health, anything, it's like we're like a plant. You got to pour water on it. You got to feed it. You a person will yeah, turn toxic. Unless, no, they won't grow. It's stunted. And anything that doesn't grow is dying. If you got to think like this, right? Every year, you have a birthday, you're growing, you're getting bigger, your your body's developing, right? I don't so, know about every year. At some point you start As a growing. kid, as okay. a kid. But you're still, every year, you're getting older. So you're growing, right? In terms of age, right? You're alive. The moment you stop, you're dead. So that's the same thing with our mind, right? So let's say I'm reading, I'm educating myself, I'm doing all these things to become a better person, but when I stop, I'm stagnant. What happens? Oh, I, I agree. You, you get stuck. Mentally, you get, you emotionally, get stuck. spiritually, I'm dead. Financially, I'm dead. I don't have any resources because I'm not pouring water into me. I'm not nourishing me. You know what I'm saying? You got to think of yourself like a plant. Yeah, so if you pour toxic water on you, it's going to come out. What would be the- well, you, you know what. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is, whatever you feed your soul is gonna come out. Yeah, good or bad. You know what I'm saying? So, good or bad. Yeah, whatever or comes bad. in is gonna come out. Good or bad. What is the scripture? It says, um, "It's not what goes in a man that defiles him; it's what comes out." And that's true. You know what I'm saying? Because eventually, it's gonna come out. Yeah, I hear that period of day. You get somebody real pissed off and they cuss. And they be like, oh, I don't cuss. Oh, your ass cuss. <laughs> I don't think they necessarily use profanity. I don't believe that necessarily means you curse. I think many times. Uh, if you get somebody off guard and they get real pissed off, and they be like, you motherfucker. They cuss. Because most of a person that don't cuss, that word is not going to pop in their mind to say. I'm not a, I'm not a cursor, but I think if you made me mad. I would hope that I wouldn't, but I can't say that I'm I'm not. And, and consciously, this is what's crazy because consciously I know I'm I'm using profanity, right? But if I'm mad, right, which hasn't happened, I'm just thinking of me being me. Depending on the effect I want, I may. Is it conscious that I'm doing it? Yeah. So sometimes people just choose things that are not right, but I'm not going to say they necessarily always use profanity. Yeah, you. I guess you got a point, but it, it, it's getting fed into them mentally. Well, I think you probably listen to music, you probably watching shows, and, and some of them words is getting fed into your mind, so that it can slip out when you get upset. Well, I think you probably all already know the word. And some people, I'm gonna be honest, even if they got mad, they probably wouldn't use the word. I'm just saying, I'm thinking of me. Um, I'm not fully removed from profanity. I don't try to always <laughs> use it, but I can't, you know, say for certain if. if, if but it takes a lot for me to get mad. Be honest. It takes a lot uh, uh, for me to get, because when I get mad, I get quiet. I, I get say a good super cuss word, quiet. Get shit straight. I ain't going to necessarily say that. It could actually, you know, make things worse. But going back to what you were saying, which was what? Uh, basically, um, healthy food, that if it, it doesn't last so long. It, it just, you try to eat healthy. It costs, first of all, it costs more money. And then I know more with inflation because it, it, it's like a, a drive through meals, like $12. Yeah, it's, well, it's then, expensive. And then you need then healthy food is more. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Healthy food is way more than junk food. It is. So you could go get you a, a, a cheeseburger, nine nine But listen, but listen. But let you go buy a strawberry. But, you know what I'm saying? But listen. We're, we're in a, a society now that nobody should be hungry because there's EBT. But the point is not about EBT. The point <laughs> is when you go buy these fruits and try to eat healthy, the shit goes bad fast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? True. And it's like, it's like a, a it's like a. Uh, but I, that's why, honestly, I, my goal, and I know this is like off topic because you're using an analogy. You're not, it's a metaphor. It's not actually reality, even though food, I mean, food does go bad. I get what you're saying. But honestly, a, a goal no, I was of mine. Really talking about food. Okay, a goal of mine <laughs> is 
I want to have land because you know how like we have the fruit in the backyard no, and we could just go yeah home. it ain't gonna go bad because it's not bad until it doesn't even start going bad until you take it off the tree you know what I mean and so one of the things like over the last five years I've been thinking I want to have like a farm with like just trees and vegetables and miles and miles of food to where you know because i think that's the only way honestly in terms of food to be healthy is to grow your own food because they put all these pesticides on it all this different stuff that they put in food that's like con- like it has contaminations in it and it's bad for our bodies and it's all these toxins that we we're not even aware of that's causing cancer and all these different things it's like i'd rather just grow my own food yeah and and then, and then I guess because you just said bad for your body, and I just envision like all the stuff people put in their bodies and don't like, even know they don't even cherish their temple. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got this vessel, and you don't appreciate it. Well, that's the same thing when you're going around having sex with everybody. You don't appreciate, and that that's what I'm teaching my kids, especially my daughters, my son too. What are you putting? Like your body is your biggest asset. Like that's sacred. Everybody shouldn't have access to that. You know, everybody shouldn't have access to you. Because if you know your worth and you know you're of value, just based on us even talking about dysfunctional relationships, everybody shouldn't even have access to be, have access to you to get your time. You know, if you know your worth and you know your value, it's just certain stuff you're not going to give energy to. You know, it's a trend. It, it being a trend going on with that red flags. You see a red flag, you run. And it's a lot, it's like, they use it comical, common, you know what I'm saying, in a funny way, but they they really don't, they see the flags in their own life, but yet they still feel so, it's so hard for them to break away from it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's easy. It's, okay, think about it. I want to lose weight. I, I just went to see my trainer today and I told her, I hate coming to see you. I love you, but I hate working out, right? The thing is, we can recognize things in our lives all the time, but the reason why people avoid recognizing it is because that means I have to change something, and change requires work. People don't want to put in the work. They, and, and that's very true. And then a lot of people don't want to be the outsider. Meaning? Meaning once once you feel like you're your value and you ain't going to put up with a lot of this nonsense, you're going to be you on an island change. by yourself. You're going to be on an island by yourself. Guess what? You know what I'm saying? When people, I stopped, don't, people ain't brave enough to be that. When I stopped feeding into certain conversations, my phone stopped ringing. And it was like, oh, okay. When, I, when, I, when I'm not solving your problems or giving you money, my phone, to, oh, okay. But you have to be comfortable with being on an island by yourself. Because when you break away from dysfunction, people are going to think you're the crazy one. They're not going to get it. Yes. Because it's like you're going against everything we've always done. We're not tripping, you tripping. We've always done this. And so it's going to require you to be by yourself. And it's for the it's not for the faint. You have to have a strength about you that's like, okay, I'm doing this for me. But if you're a follower and you just want to be in the in crowd, but see the follower always gets the short end of the stick, right? They're always the do boy, the do girl. I mean, you never get ahead in life because you're following somebody else's dream, somebody else's passion, somebody else's goal. You're following somebody else. Now, a great leader also knows how to follow. I know how to lead. I know how to follow, but I'm not going to follow you into stupidity. You know what I mean? I'm not going to follow you at the expense of me. And many times people are, you guys are following other people at the expense of you. They don't care about your, your well-being. Oh, girl, you know what? I'm about to go out here and talk to these dudes. You got a good relationship because you you value your friend, not even value, because you follow your friend. You end up going with her and doing things that you wouldn't do in your, in, in sabotaging your own relationship, but she don't have a relationship. Yes. So you're following her at the expense of you. You know what I mean? Or basically somebody like, oh, let's do this scam. It's like, I don't, I don't, my rent is paid. I'm good. Yeah. Bills is paid. You need the money, but you're following them at the expense of you. So you got to understand in life, you got to be around healthy people because someone that is healthy, they're not going to have you follow them at the expense of you. I used to have a talk show and I remember I had a girl on from Bad Girls Club and I asked her before we did the show, like, what are you comfortable with? Because I wasn't willing to put her on the line at the expense of her for my show. 
And so my husband was like, well, why are you asking? She was on the show. But I'm like, I always want people to be comfortable with what I'm going to ask them because I'm not trying to exploit you. Many times you'll have people in your life that is trying to yes. exploit you for the benefit of them. And because you keep following them, you get caught up in these traps. Like he was saying, they're like, oh, you pee would you say it. I'm pussy wet. They were saying that to him. Let's do Remember? it again. Let's go, go. Now start it. Go ahead. See, I'll be in the zone. <laughs> and he just, you know what I mean? When I'm passionate, I'm passionate. I'm in my zone. And he just kind of interrupted that. And now I'm like, uh, no, but they would tell him like, oh, you pussy shit. wet. <laughs> Well, I thought y'all was giving me the cue to say. No. <laughs> they would tell him that basically he, um, that, that like, uh, the, the funny thing, everybody wanted what I had too. <laughs> that I was like controlling and I wouldn't let him do anything. And I'm like, this is a grown man at the end of the day. He, there's a freedom of choice, right? There's a freedom of choice, but there's also a, he has a freedom of choice to go do regardless of him being married. He has a freedom of choice to do whatever he wants to do, whether if it's go sleep with somebody else, whether it's have another wife, another, he has the freedom of choice to do whatever he wants to do. But I also have the freedom of choice to not to tolerate it and deal with it. But I always was a leader anyways. You I'm couldn't not, you talk me into shit anyways. I'm going to do what I want to do. But this is my thing. But they were trying to get him to do things based on their life he had a he had a happy home he had a wife you know he had a family he had things but they didn't have it and the ones that had it apparently you know you didn't listen to the last podcast they weren't happy because they was at my door knocking on my <laughs> door every day for my husband and they girls is in the house and we like in our early 20s and i'm like i've always been very outspoken but it, i'm the type like if it gets to the point of, i have to say something they are knocking on my door every day at night. I'm making dinner. We about to sit down and eat as a family and like, oh, you coming out? Like, dude, don't you got kids and a girl at home? Why are you at my door every day? So, of course, I like, hey, you gay? And, and it just, wasn't cool at that time to be gay. <laughs> well, okay. Because <laughs> I'm like, do you do? In other words, what I was telling them or asking, do you want my husband? Like she was very protected over me. No, I, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> I didn't think the guy was gay whatsoever, but I was trying to bring provoke thought to bring to his attention. Like you at my door, like this is your man every day. Like he has a whole family and so do you go enjoy your family. And so people will try to get you into doing the things that they do based on their circumstances. Your family's, your house ain't happy. Yes. So that toxics will try to run over to your household. Correct. And I wasn't having it. You get a coin on that one. You throw yourself a coin. You know what I'm saying? If it was a dollar in there, I'll throw you a dollar. A dollar. Dollar make you holler. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Let me go get some dollars then. <laughs> Shit. Hold on. <laughs> so basically, we cover a toxic relationships, families. You know, it's just I I feel like peace. Peace is key to life. In my opinion, peace is peace trumps everything. If you find peace, you got to find every way to protect your peace because people will come and try to disrupt your peace. That's crazy. I, if people will see you happy. And they just find a reason to come try to come fuck shit up. But, 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 okay. I want y'all to understand. You do have some people that are doing maliciously. But a person is not saying, I'm maliciously going to make them unhappy. They're not unhappy. So it's not like they're looking to bring chaos. They're already chaotic. They only know how to operate in chaos. So they think you should operate in chaos with them. And that's why it's big to analyze people around you. Like I can always tell when somebody's chaotic, like they structure their schedule. It's always something going on, some type of drama. I like peace. I tell my husband, we can never do a reality show. I'm too peaceful. It would, it would be a straight boring to most people. My life is boring because in my personal life, there's nothing really good. I mean, we have fun. We take, it's fun to me. But most people don't think your they, life is fun like if it don't have drama. Yeah, if they there's like no the drama. As a matter of fact, it was a TikTok trend. And the girl had, had put on there, when she on her period, when she's on her menstrual cycle, she basically makes up reasons to argue with her dude. And 
they like, oh, yeah, girl, I'll be doing that. And I'm like, what? And so there was a guy on there and was like, is this normal? And I'm like, no, this is toxic. Like, I ain't never been on a menstrual cycle and just go out my way, try to ear like, but in society, people really believe, I've even heard guys say, if they ain't crazy, I don't want them because you have learned to operate in dysfunction and chaos. chaos. And so when people would see my life in our real life, they would think we, we were boring because we don't have drama in our real lives, but that's peaceful. But some people when they live in dysfunction, they cannot watch a person that like drama and put them in a room or a, 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 a environment, a peaceful environment. Yeah. They're either going to get uncomfortable. Them demons leave, get to, them demons get get to, to shaking. Jumping. It. They get to jumping. They either are going to get uncomfortable <laughs> oh, and leave shit. or they're going to try to pop something off because they can operate in a place of peace. Just like a person that is healthy, that likes peace, cannot operate in a chaotic environment. Mm, I don't like a, to be in That's a coin right there. That's a coin. That's a coin right there. Somebody need to take a note on that one. That's a real one. A chaotic person can't handle a, a, a place of peace. They can't. Watch a person that like drama. Put them in. The, I've seen it. They going to try to either pop or I got to because, oh, it's boring. It's boring because you don't know what peace, you don't know what peaceful fun looks like. When people ain't talking about people, there's no gossip. Ain't nobody in nobody's face. Ain't nobody about to fight. Ain't no drama. So you don't know how to just have I used to like nice that when I was fun. younger. I ain't going to lie. And I hated I it. Was, I was toxic. You know what I'm saying? That was the life of the party. Get shit cracking. You know what I'm saying? And I would be looking at him like, if you don't sit down, <laughs> that was, for real. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I got out of that. I was very toxic. I ain't going to lie. In my 20s, I, I was very toxic. And, and I didn't know I was toxic. I thought it was normal. And, and he would be like mad shit. at me because I'd be yeah, like, dude, be like, what 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 are, what are we doing? Now? Like, what what's going on here? But I, I grew, I learned, and um, I found peace. And that's the key, peace. I wasn't, I, um, I didn't know what peace was. Because you were raised in a dysfunctional household, like most of us are, right? And, and people be like, oh, I was raised in the suburbs, and my parents went to work. Okay, yeah, what does that mean? That they 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 had you know a substantial amount of income, but what was going on in the house? What was and people don't like to be real with. Well, I wasn't raised in the hood. I'm like that doesn't have anything to do with dysfunction. I, it's funny when I have clients or just people in general will tell me that, and they start telling me these stories, and I point key things out, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, it wasn't as perfect as you thought, right?" Basically, you just have a different set of problems, right? Because we all have problems. There's always things going on in the household. Not to say that everyone is toxic or grows up in a toxic environment. But most people at some point experience some type of dysfunction. They just don't know they're dysfunctional. They don't know that the behaviors that they're operating in is out of hurt. It's about a learned behavior. It's about um, situational circumstances. It's about environment. All those are play a factor. And trust me, if you start looking at your life, you can see ways um, of how you may have some dysfunction in your household growing up. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and wrap us up then? Hold on. She got a phone call. She and my baby's on the phone. Until next time. Well, I'm not even finished. Well, she, then get take your phone call. Okay, that one, a lot of people ready. taking it. She in the middle of a podcast, so I'm gonna take phone calls and say, "This is how unprofessional it is." I would call this toxic, very toxic. Yeah, I'll take her home. She I'll home. take her home. Have a conversation. We in the podcast. Right, we working. Me... Ain't respecting the grind. Let me Goodness. tell you something. <laughs> let me let me tell you something about me. When it comes to my husband and my kids, everything stops. I don't care what I'm doing. When it comes to those two factors, everything stops. See, most people will edit this out and chip and chop, but we ain't doing all that. This is the raw us. This is real life. And a lot of people want to, like, filter their life. You know what I'm saying? That's It is what it is. Yeah, my baby called me. The heck with this podcast. I need to know what's going on with my baby. So finish up what you were saying. What was I saying? Mm, I don't you know, because, you know, I, <laughs> I was halfway listening to myself. I don't know. If the viewers, was y'all listening? We got to get, like, the, the, the call in. The um, listeners, they you can't see us. They can't see us. Well, you shit. said the viewers. The viewers, listeners, the, listeners. the followers, the shit, they all the same. The leaders, 
the breaking cyclers. Okay, but I'll go on. The encouragers. So how so how would one basically separate from a toxic person? Choose you every time. Choose you every time. Because this is the thing, right? If you're around toxic people, eventually it's going to equate to something negative. There's going to be a consequence. There's no toxic or dysfunctional relationship that you benefit in. Because it may be an instant gratification, but at some point, something is bound to happen. So you have to choose you. You know, if you want to bet, I'm always, I'm always self-reflecting and um, trying to be a better version of myself. You know, even if somebody feels like I'm wrong them, and even if I don't feel like I was wrong, I'm still going to sit back and analyze that situation and say, okay, even though you don't feel like you were wrong, but what could you have done different to have a different outcome? Right. And I think when you look at life like that, self-reflecting and know that you want to be, but everybody don't want to be a better person though. Some, I think they do. I think sometimes people just get stuck. Like I'm going to take an example. Um, I was watching Snowfall. Um, I forgot his name. He came back from Africa. He he had his whole mindset change. He wanted to do better. He wanted to help his people. But when he came back to the projects, it's like oh. the environment just sucked him back in. Now he back slanging dope. But the, the you know biggest, what I'm but it's where like he sometimes you was, feel stuck. No, where he where he went wrong, guys. Where he went wrong. This is where he went wrong. Going back. This is the thing. You elevated. You grew up out of that stage of dysfunction. You went back to a dysfunctional environment that people are still there because they don't want to leave. And that is the biggest problem. But that was his have. home. That's all he got. That's what I'm saying. Some people is stuck where they at. That wasn't what he had. He was already out of it. You cannot. He was out in Africa. What do you want to do? Just live in Africa? I think they were trying to live in Africa. Yeah, but you know who's gonna just live in Africa? But you got. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes, the like Listen, you said, you stay on. at home with your parents. You no. stuck. Sometimes you just no. stuck in a, no. in a in an environment. No. no, in the snowfall situation, he didn't have to go back. He didn't have okay, to go true, back. He didn't. He went back, and this is this is where we he go went wrong. Back thinking he's gonna help. And you change. can't help somebody that don't want to grow because they're still stuck in that mindset. And, and, and sometimes it's not even an environment because you have to change your mindset before you change your location. Because if you change your location, you're just taking this mindset yes. to the next location. So we be talk, you're so we could talk about, oh, we live in a certain place. No, you got to change your mind first. You got to elevate your mind before you can ever grow in any aspect of your life. So it don't matter if I move to the suburbs. If my mind is still impoverished, I just took an impoverished mind to the suburbs. Yes, but what if you have a great mind, but you're still in in, in the... You move different. You know what I'm saying? You move different. I had a but great, it's harder. It's, uh, it's going to be harder no matter what environment you're in, right? You just... This is the thing. Life is not easy. Well, let me say this. Life is simple. We just make it complicated. And I really believe that because it's all in a way how you perceive it. You know, viewing the glass half empty or full is true because you can have a situation, but the problem is big as you, as you make it. Let's say I can't pay my rent, right? I can't pay my mortgage, right? Okay. I can't change it. If I'm doing everything I could do to, to, to basically make it happen and nothing changes, I'm going to keep stressing over it. No, you're going to get up and make some shit happen. No, if I'm doing everything that I already can to change it, to make something happen, you can't stress over something you can't change. You got to roll with the punches. This is what I tell people. So even if I became homeless, right, and I slept in my car, I still have somewhere to sleep. The problem is, oh, I don't, I got to sleep in my car. Okay, but it's only a problem if you make it a problem. You sleeping in your car is however you view it. I may not want to be in my car, but I'm going to make the best situation of living in this so car. So basically learn something from your L. Exactly. And make the best situation of it while you're in it to make sure you never be in that situation again. Learn from it and grow. Okay. That make a point. But if I'm like, oh my God, I'm in my car and it's this, this, I'm making it a problem. And and that's all you focus is on your problem, but you ain't trying to solve a, a solution to your problem. You stay stuck 
drilling about your problem. Correct. Okay. I'm I, solution I, I, focused. I'll tell you in a heartbeat. I agree because sometimes people just get so so much focus on the problem, they don't want to work the solution. Don't come to see me in therapy. We're going to talk about the problem for maybe two to three sessions. Then I'm going to be like, okay, well, how are we going to solve it? Because we could talk about the problems all day long. Many times people just want to go back and forth about the problem. But then when you like the solution, they get quiet. Because they, they it's to easy to they stay. They work. Exactly. So the problem is only a problem if you make it a problem. Because if you put that much energy on the problem, then making a solution, how far would we be? Hey man, I just feel like I just went to church and shit. The Holy Ghost oh, sprinkled me all up and everything. Don't play with God. Well, I, I gotta play because I, I I felt the Holy Ghost. Oh, Y'all gotta be playing. I don't know if you're playing you. You sound not. like you little stingy ass over there. Look at you. Look at you. I'm not stingy <laughs> because I can't praise the Lord. I don't. I, are like, you serious? You. You I don't. Like, but this is the thing. I don't know if you're serious or not. To check my G card and shit. Like, nigga, let me see your paperwork, nigga. Like, hold on. Like, are shit, you serious? I got my Christian card. Are shit. you serious? <laughs> Like shit. You're not answering the question. Are you goodness. serious? I don't know if you're playing oh, or not. Goodness. Yeah, it was deep. I would have gave you a coin, but I ain't working the board. You know what I'm saying? You you got the board over there and you ain't hitting the notes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that, that you know, stop focusing on the problem. The problem's gonna come. You always get work there, the there's solutions, always boy. gonna Solve be problems, problems in life. There's always going to be problems in life. But I much rather spend my time trying to figure this problem out with a solution than Amen. to continue to keep talking about the problem. Yes. The problem is not going to help me. The problem is not going to go anywhere. But I, I think I'll that goes solution. goes far with being toxic, because I feel like the problem is the negative. Right. You know what I'm saying? People like to stay on the negative. Working the problems with the solution is the positive. You know what I'm saying? People don't want to think positivity. They want to stay in that negative cesspool. Because it's, it's easy. easy. Yes. It's, it's easy. easy. And that's why I tell people, like, even being a child of God is not easy. When you truly, 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 I'm not talking about I'm just quoting Bible scriptures and, you know, I'm going to look like I'm going to church and like, oh, that's BS, right? God is, God is everywhere. God is within you. You don't have to go to church and all this other stuff that people want to, you know, this propaganda. God is a relationship. But it's much easier to just pop off. You know how many times, you know how many times that I really want to put somebody in a place or put my hands on them? And it's like my integrity. I can't do that. I can't walk like that. I can't be that person. It's much harder to have self-control than to just basically be impulsive. Anybody can be impulsive. It's weak-minded. You Damn, just, I'm weak minded. Yeah, if you're impulsive, you weak minded. <laughs> she over here calling me weak and shit. Yeah, you're okay. calling yourself weak. If you're <laughs> impulsive, it's weak minded because you're not thinking before acting, right? It takes a lot of self discipline to think before just reacting because when you think, you got to stop and now I have to respond, right? And so people don't understand that it's, it's strength and integrity. It's weakness and just, oh, I'm going to just pop off and do, that's weak. That's called giving niggas passes. No, nah, that's weak because you're not thinking. It's, it's easy to just blow up. It's easy to curse somebody. It, that's easy. But have somebody in your face and you thinking all the things you could do because you know you can hurt them and you don't. That's strength. That's integrity. Are you just waiting to catch them in the dark alley? No, I ain't waiting to catch you. <laughs> I, I don't work too hard for my stuff to lose my stuff. Oh, over shit, you. I catch you on the flip side. Because that's the thing, too. When you work hard for something, I just, I'm not going to ever put myself in a position to lose what I work hard for. Because it could be going just like that. Think of Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. He didn't have self discipline in that moment. And he could have lost it all with cancel culture. That one moment, even though I, I don't, I think everybody's entitled to a mistake. I mean, we all make mistakes. To me, I ain't going to cancel you because you had a bad moment. We all have bad moments. Some of us are just on bigger platforms than others, but we all have bad moments. Basically. Right? But just like that, you could lose it all because you didn't have self discipline. And that's why you stop having letting people have control of your eggs. Shit. I'm going to have my own damn farm and my own damn eggs. Yes, the, the game is over. Oh. We're going to have a small commercial break right now. All right. Please I'm shop at wait. Grind Face Apparel. Is she on the phone call? Does, the, does she need to ride home too? All right, I'll be there in a minute. This is real life, y'all. This is All real right. life podcast. No 
Oh, cuts it. Yeah, this is real life when you have kids. So because I have to go get my kid, we're going to end this. Hey, 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 hey. (laughs) Wrap it up. (laughs) Until next time, as I always say, continue to break cycles.